we get in trouble and the system's not working for us, they're the ones who are out there marching and protesting. And, and so now you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think that's a, a sign of strength because that's what being a man is, putting women down. That's not acceptable. Turns out I was filthy. <laughs> I was filthy. And stand on that fact. <laughs> I have always <laughs> been filthy. And you knew that when you hired me. I headlined, babe, at your <laughs> casino, which I might have continued to play had you not run it into the ground. Exactly. <laughs> but who does that? And a very special man, a, a great guy, Dr. Masad Boulos. Many of you know him. He's a very successful man. He happens to be the father of Tiffany's husband, Michael, who's a very exceptional young guy. And she's an exceptional young woman. So, and she's going to have a baby. So that's nice. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. see your eyes, mm -hmm. my mind went blank. <laughs> well, everybody's was, mind goes right, blank in that exactly. place. Jonathan's a romantic, and he's very handsome. When he smiled, he's very, very cute. So, on Gary's show, mm -hmm. when you did the talent show, oh God. something went off in my mind. I was like, well, wait a minute. I got to write a poem. I so this. I wrote a poem. You want to hear it? Oh, I okay, you have to you, stand. No one has ever wrote a poem for me. As my heart is full of bliss, standing here in front of you. So now what do I do? Take your hand, be your man, and I hope you understand that I'm grateful and blessed to see you in that dress. That was beautiful. <laughs> you are good, you, are, you do have a talent. I could feel it between us. He really makes a really good first impression, very sincere. The moment that I did see you, Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of The Take. I'm your host as always, Kendra Diggs here. Glad you can join us here on The Take on this Monday, October 14th, 2024. This is The Take, your Monday destination. Here on The Take, we are the hub of pop culture. So, like I said, join in the conversation using the hashtag Take here on Connect. And don't forget, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe is Karen. Tell a friend, call a friend, hit that subscribe button so you won't miss a thing. All right, <laughs> what a take we have for you. Let's get to the big story. The big story this week is, man, former President Barack Obama calling out all black men that are on the fence or undecided about Kamala Harris. You know Kamala Harris is running for president 
This could be historic, her being the first female president of the United States. But Barack Obama saying there are some hurdles and some obstacles in the way, and he wants to address that right then, right now. We are merely three weeks away before the presidential election from tomorrow. So Obama and everybody else trying to catalyze the vote, trying to get all the vote going. Let's hear what Obama had to say right now. And on the other side, you have someone who has consistently shown disregard, not just for the communities, but for you as a person. And you're thinking about sitting down? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, because of Putin, might be. <laughs> and you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that. Because, because part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for it. And I think anybody you are talking to in a barbershop, anybody you are talking to in your house, in your family, at a, at a, at a church, who is coming with that kind of attitude, I think you have to ask them, well, how can that be? Because the women in our lives have been getting our backs this entire time. They've been raising us and working and having our backs. And when we get in trouble and the system's not working for us, they're the ones who are out there marching and protesting. And, and so now you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think that's a, a sign of strength because that's what being a man is, putting women down. That's not acceptable. Obama did say that, that hey, some black men need to kind of like, need to get on board and stuff like that. And it took it received a lot of backlash from the first African American president almost nearly what 15 years ago Obama was elected president. Man, it's been so long. Man. Well, let's hear a little bit of what people were saying right here. Get your head ass down somewhere. Goofy looking motherfucker, like slender man looking motherfucking ass. Like anybody trying to listen to you, bro. You didn't get the memo. The community ain't fucking with you, dog. We ain't fucking with you. We ain't got two words for you. It, yes, we do. Hi and bye. We are not fucking with you, B.O. Like, no, bro. They're going to send your ass to the community like, oh, let me go ahead and chastise the black man. Motherfucker, what? No. We are not fucking with you. We're not. And just for that, they sent Magic Johnson. They send yo ass. Oh, and don't forget uh uh Sassy uh Martin, DL Hughley, Ricky Smiley. Like like the list goes on and on. Like really, bro? Al Sharpton ass old old snitching ass. He ain't nothing but a rat. Who's next? We ain't fucking with none of y'all. None of you guys represent a real black American man. Not one of y'all. If anything, y'all represent what it means to be a goddamn sellout. Peace. Man, if you want to sit your biscuit head ass down somewhere, goofy looking motherfucker. I'm so happy that he said what the majority of America has been thinking. And I'm particularly happy that he mentioned Pookie, the cousin. 
And that was a little political shade on Barack Obama's part because he understands that Trump specifically resonates with people who don't have college degrees. And that's not an attempt to put down people who didn't go to college. It's just been statistically proven that your level of education 100% influences how you vote. He also somewhat alludes to the fact that he's a biracial person and Kamala Harris is a multiracial person, yet he was completely accepted and validated in his blackness. Whilst Kamala Harris has people like Candace Owens creating entire series and profiting off of questioning her blackness. And based solely on accolades and credentials, uh, on paper, technically, Kamala would be more qualified to fill the role as president than Barack Obama was. I'm going to leave y'all with this. I 100% think that Hillary Clinton would have won the presidential race against Donald Trump had she not been affiliated with uh, Bill Clinton. Had it been some random white lady from Montana who was a governor and had similar credentials, she likely would have won because Trump is not the popular candidate. But the issue with Kamala is the fact that she phenotypically presents as Black and she's a woman. Intersectionality. Have a good night. This yeah, some people were a little bit upset and mad. People saying you can't tell me what to vote for, who to vote for, which they are got the entire two in their right. But Obama was trying to galvanize the base. So, hey, Obama trying to do what he can to get the votes out because he knows that um, there could be some trouble if Donald Trump is in the office, if another administration comes, who knows? Well, um, we'll see how this is going to go. Don't forget. We're going to have us on viral Obama and black men calling out black men. And we'll have that special. We'll get more in depth on what's going on with that since we kind of like a under a 30 minute show. So, hey, you know, they're going to be. All right. We move on to celebrity news and celebrity news. Nicki Minaj did her concert and brought out this person. Oh, <laughs> Sexy Red. Um, I mean, is she endorsing Sexy Red? Because Nicki Minaj having problems with most of the female rappers and Sexy Red, she'll just get along and get along right here. Yeah, Sexy Red appeared on NXT. That was kind of like we infused and viral and pro wrestling show. Man, Sexy Red doing a lot. So um, Sexy Red trying to get her, her her stuff out there, her name out there. So, hey, wasn't no Bill or Taylor. All right, on talk shows, talk shows. On The View, man, we can't get enough of Donald Trump. Donald Trump even made mention to that he admits that he watches The View because he made comments and mention about Whippy Goldberg. Let's hear what he had to say about Whippy Goldberg. Hey disgusting half the place left i said i'd never hire yeah he called whippy goldberg vile nasty a nasty human being i mean whippy goldberg she's been doing right she come for almost 40 years well almost 50 if you ask me but whippy goldberg's been doing it i mean that's who she is and even rippy and the whole women of the view responded take a look turns out i was filthy <laughs> i was filthy <laughs> And stand on that fact. <laughs> I have always <laughs> been filthy. And you knew that when you hired me. I headlined, babe, at your <laughs> casino, which I might have continued to play had you not run it into the ground. Exactly. <laughs> but he does that. You know, listen, how dumb are you? <laughs> 
you hired me four times. You can go to William Morris and get the, the things because I know you all are going to be looking for it. <laughs> so talk to William Morris. You hired me four times and you didn't know what you were getting? How dumb are you? <clears throat> this is what irritated him. Not what's going on. Right. Hurricanes. Right. No. There's all right. kind of stuff going on in our country. But we irritated him yeah, to the point where he had to admit he does watch the show, Thank something you, we Tom. all knew. <laughs> so when you hear when you hear people saying, I don't watch that show, they are lying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Whoopi Goldberg responded saying that he, Donald Trump knew what he was getting before that. I mean, he should have known. I mean, Whoopi Goldberg was in the same class with Robin Williams and Billy Crystal, so he kind of knew. And then Whoopi Goldberg with that slight dig at Donald Trump saying that his casinos ain't came, didn't turn out paying out the way it did. But hey, there's here no deal on that. Okay, on that. All right, we move on to another. Um, on on another, on the Jennifer Hudson show. Jennifer Hudson welcomed rapper Gorilla. Rapper Gorilla. Who's been um, right now? If you listen to the radio, she's everywhere. She's on radio. She's on TV. She's on social media. She's trying to get her um, platform out there. Well, Gorilla, J Hud talked to Gorilla and asked about her new success, her new album, and why she stays humble in all this. Take a look. White House, you got the key to the city in Memphis. Beyonce, a fan, and you over here talking about trying. Girl, stop playing with me. <laughs> uh, how does it feel like? To achieve all of these things, is that a sign? Oh what do you God, think God. when you look at these pictures and think about where you are now? Like, I, it's so still surreal to me and unbelievable. Like, like I can't believe I'm talking to you right now. Oh. Like, I, you don't know I really love you. Oh. Like, like, especially like when I first saw you, like I saw you on American Idol, but on Dream Girls, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like, I know like your whole every song you sung on there. Do you? Mm -hmm. Girl, how old was you when Dream Girls came out? Uh, I think I was like eight or seven. Could you imagine? So who were you? You were Effie, Dina, or Laurel? Um, you was all of us. I was all y'all. Listen. <laughs> I ain't like when they turned their back on you. I'm talking about Effie, we all got pain. No, y'all don't. <laughs> Tell them. Pain. Uh -uh. Girl, what was you when I needed to? That's for sure. So before we get into this Dream Girls thing, let's talk about your new album, Glorious. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. How do you feel that it's out now? Um, I'm excited, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hope they love it as much as I love it and they taking it in how I want them to. I try to touch different aspects on the album, so. Yes, because you got a lot of amazing features. What inspired the features on the album? Um, so I, I did the modern features like with my girls, Megan, Lotto, Six of Red. You know what I'm saying? Did, we the hottest, you know, going yes, on right now. Yes, we know. <laughs> like I said, Gorilla, she is a perfect example of being a rapper, humble. And, you know, she's cute and all this. She even came up, I think she did home, did perform at Homecoming for Album Main Man in Huntsville. So Gorilla's trying to get her rounds and Gorilla's trying to be everywhere and everywhere. So good for Gorilla. All right. We'll be back with more tape. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more tape here on Connect TV. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the tape. I'm your host as always, Kendra Dix here. Glad you can join us here on the tape on this on Monday, October 14, 2022. We told you we're going to be more now a Monday show rather than a Thursday show. Thursdays, we were kind of brawling it. I think Mondays is even better. So we wrap up that whole week. And put it in we can on that Monday. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to use the hashtag take here on connect. And don't forget, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe is Karen. Tell a friend, call a friend, hit that subscribe button so you won't miss a thing here on the tape. All right, let's get to the political rundown. On political rundown this week, President Biden had to defend his administration from the lies of Donald Trump and his running mate, JD Vance. Well, they was Trump and their Vance saying false claims about the Katrina about the disaster relief or what's going on in Florida in North Carolina. We're seeing all that and our prayers and condolences are out to the people in Florida in North Carolina who's going through losing everything and have to rebuild again. You know what I'm saying? It's I'd rather you, you know what I'm saying? For me personally, I'd rather lose everything than have my life taken. I can always rebuild and always do what I got to do as long as I got God's grace. 
you know, we want them, we want them, we're thinking about you. And we hope you get, we hope you're getting enough relief for rebuilding the process, Brad. So, hey, let's hear what Trump and Vance had to say right here. And a very special man, a, a great guy, Dr. Masad Bulas. Many of you know him. He's a very successful man. He happens to be the father of Tiffany's husband, Michael, who's a very exceptional young guy. And she's an exceptional young woman, so... And she's going to have a baby, so that's nice. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, you have lying Kamala. She lies about everything, including where she worked. Remember? I worked so hard at McDonald's, it was unbelievable. I stood over the French fries all summer, winter, fall, spring. I was — she never worked there. She lied. You know the beauty of that? They'll say, oh, it's so terrible to bring that up. It's so simple. No, David, the beauty of that, it's so simple. It's so easy to understand. She said she worked like a dog in McDonald's, and it never happened. She didn't work there. That's better than some complex long story that I have to, before we get to the fact that she's a no-good liar. Man, Donald Trump, he's doing any and everything. He's kind of desperate right now. He'll do anything to win. I think that's what he's doing. He's trying to pivot to any and everything to make up stuff. That's why Barack Obama, we said earlier, saying that Trump's making up stuff and people believing it. So, hey, if people want to believe it, that's on them. That's on them. If they're Donald Trump supporters, we let them be. They will have to see what the reckoning be rather than you will have to see what the reckoning be. All right. We get to the re the reality show clip down. The reality show clip down. On the Golden Bachelor, on the Golden Bachelor, John then writes a poem to Joan about love. Take a look. See your eyes. Mm -hmm. My mind went blank. <laughs> well, everybody's was, mind goes right, blank yeah, in that exactly. place. Jonathan's a romantic, and he's very handsome. When he smiled, he's very, very cute. So, on Gary's show, mm -hmm. when you did the talent show, oh god, something went off in my mind. I was like, well, wait a minute. I got to write a poem. So I wrote a poem. You want to hear it? Oh, I okay, you have to stand. No one has ever wrote a poem for me. As my heart is full of bliss, standing here in front of you. So now what do I do? Take your hand, be your man, and hope you understand that I'm grateful and blessed to see you in that dress. Beautiful. <laughs> you are good. You are, you do have a talent. I could feel it between us. He really makes a really good first impression. Very sincere. The moment that I did see you. All right, John didn't say all these crazy words about love. I think he's really in love with Joan. Yay. So we we we'll have to wait and see. But I think Joan's kind of like they always do that on these shows. They want to be famous and then they don't find love, but they just want their TV time. Let's say they was on TV. That's why I think The Bachelor and all these shows, is they don't want to find love. Some people do find love. Some people don't. I think the original Bachelorette, when the girl was on there with the glasses, she found love, as you can tell. But everybody else, it's just a show just to keep on the boat rolling. That's how it be. So, hey, he said, I'm walking on the plane on my mind. Don't think about a plantation, man. Just scoot away from that. Just scoot away from that. Find you a sister. Find you a sister. Find you an old sister. Old school sister like you. Your old school cat dad, you can find an old school sister who's out there. She's like a milf or something. You know how they go. All right. On the voice. On the voice. Snoop Dogg. Who would put Snoop Dogg as a judge? Snoop Dogg don't even sing. He's a rapper. But Snoop Dogg saw sexual seduction, so I guess... That counts, but I mean, Snoop Dogg don't know about singing. He know about rapping. I know the other three, Michael Buble, Reba McIntyre, and Gwen Stefani, they know about singing. Well, Snoop Dogg tried to um, poke fun at Reba, and Snoop Dogg tried to play too many tricks on Reba with this. Yes, sir. I need you to hold on tight with all your might, because these are the last three contestants of the night. La, da, da, da. 
I like it. We made it this far. Yeah, hold on tight. Did we make it this far to get this far? We're doing good. Oh, yes. Y'all got to come to my dressing room one time. Right. Oh, God. I'm scared of your dressing room. I think you brought the essence of Snoop's dressing room to us. Reba? Yes. All right, Snoop Dogg saying that Reba need to come to his dressing room. Reba, you go in that dressing room, you ain't going to be the same Reba McTide. You're going to be walking in as country Reba, and you're going to be leaving out as a, you know what, we had Reba. That, that trying to be forgetful, like, what, what went wrong, huh? You know how that be. Snoop Dogg trying to tease and get her in there. Snoop, stop, man. <laughs> but you trying to get her, get her out of her element like you did Martha Stewart. I remember that. All right, on Dancing with the Stars, Family Matters star Reginald Rand Johnson returns home to ABC. And Reginald Rand Johnson doing this dance that he literally didn't know existed. Take a look. Did you tell Reginald Van Johnson? That's like um, Carl Winslow doing that. What's Steve Urkel at? Steve Urkel need to come out here and show him how to do it and do it the right way. Because <laughs> he looked like he was out of place. He was just out of bonds and stuff. He was like, where do I go? Do I go here? Do I go there? But hey, we got that. All right. On the viral video of the week. On the viral video of the week. A little adorable girl prepping herself with her mom getting ready for Halloween. Take a look. That's so adorable, so cute. The girl getting herself ready for Halloween. Halloween is nearly about a couple of days away, and she's prepping herself on Halloween. Ooh, what could be next for her? Only time will tell, and we will see what she's going to be dressed like for Halloween. We're going to keep up with her, and when we do our Halloween special, we'll do it. So, hey, let it be. All right, that does it for the tape. I've been your host, Kendra Dick, saying so long. We'll see you next time for another edition of the tape. See you later.